Gold is a bargain. So is silver, but physical only in your possession. If there's less than $10 trillion of gold ever mined on earth, how can fiat currency be backed by gold? If there's $303 trillion in debt in the world, the dollar is dying as the printers keep printing. That's exactly the point. You're right. Inflation erodes the purchasing power of the dollar. You used to be able to go to the grocery store with one of these and walk out with a huge basket of food. Today you go in and what, what is it, a bag? Maybe two? Depending upon what you're buying. So let me show you because this is critically important that no matter what you're doing, you know what the fundamental value of any asset is. Because that's the only way for you to know is something undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued. Therefore, do I want to buy it? Do I want to hold it? Do I want to liquidate it? So let me show you what I mean. Because in the current system, it's a debt-based system since 1971 when we officially went off the gold standard, uh, that money is created by debt. Now, you've seen these Federal Reserve charts a million times, and these gray lines are official recessions. So as you can see, the response to every recession has been growing more debt, whether you're government, corporation, or an individual. However, we all know on an individual level, there's only so much of that that you can do. But that's also true on a corporate level and a government level. So there's the answer. That is how this stuff is created. I might also point out that it costs as much to print this $100 bill as it does this $20 bill or even a $1 bill, right? So debt cre equals money creation. This is an important part of the, of the equation. And of course, there is an unlimited amount of this. As long as they can grow debt and central banks are buying it back, they can keep going with that. So unlimited amount. In Zimbabwe, which you know we've been tracking, they have lost all public confidence in their currency. They came out with a one ounce gold coin roughly a year or so ago so that the wealthy could retain their purchasing power value. And then they came out with a gold backed CBDC, but you couldn't convert that CBDC into the physical metal. So that's not doing so well. And it shouldn't. Don't be fooled by government promises because you should know they don't really work very well. So public confidence gives fiat money its value. If you are willing to work for it and use it as your tool of barter, then it has value. Even though officially there's only three cents left, but when you hold it physically, that is a different story, which I talk about all the time. But let's just move on. What you're looking at here is the Zimbabwean dollar versus the spot gold. And what do you see here? Oh, not a whole lot of movement. And, and mind you, Zimbabwe's currency has been in hyperinflation and reset a number of times since 2006. So here we still are. But you can see the suppression, the suppression, the suppression, and then whoop, oh my goodness, overnight revaluation. And they're going to tell you, ah, uh, this will take care of it. But it never really does. But gold, because of its global uses, which we're going to talk about in a second, holds its purchasing power value because it has the broadest base of functionality. It's used in every sector of the global economy, and there's a finite amount of it. So overnight revaluations do not fix monetary problems because governments continue the same bad behavior right along. However, when this happens, what do you want to be holding? You want to be holding this because that means it's lost all of its value, or do you want to be holding this? It's your choice. We vote with our wallets. We vote with our purses. And you can see, even though they were told, oh, this will fix it. Did it fix it? No. And spot gold is reflecting that. And then Zimbabwe, in terms of Zimbabwean dollar, which here's one, that's 10 trillion Zimbabwe dollars. What can you buy with this? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. So it doesn't matter all the zeros. It doesn't matter how many of these you have. It matters what you can convert them into. 
And we have all been experiencing inflation. Inflation is witness. So it does, these overnight revaluations do begin to reveal the true value, the fundamental value of an ounce of gold. That's why I'm telling you right now, gold is a bargain. So is silver, but physical only in your possession. And you're going to say to me, but Lynette, it's only trading around $2,000 an ounce because they can create as much digital gold as they want, right? But in the real world, there's a finite amount. And at the end of the day, when a government needs to regain the confidence of the public, they go to gold. What we do not know and we will not know until um, they do it is what that coverage is going to be. Historically, it's roughly a thousand to one. So if you go to sleep at night and you have a thousand dollars in the bank, when you wake up in the morning, you have one, right? But gold does just the opposite, right? It's like a spring. Right now, they use the they use the contracts, which are easy to create and cheap, to control all of the gold that exists. When they remove that, then you see gold shoot toward its fundamental value. It will not be over until they actually back the currency and you can convert it. Make no mistake about that. We need to know that. So therefore, it is not the amount of gold. It's the price in terms of this. Can you imagine going back to 1900? This is a $20 gold coin. If you had told somebody then, well, you know, one of these days, gold is going to be worth $2,000 an ounce. Back then, they would have thought you're crazy. So you might think I'm crazy now. But what I'm showing you is a repetition of history. And why have global central banks been loading up on as much physical gold as they possibly can? Because they have a gold revaluation account. Central bank gold purchases indicate revaluation plans and a new monetary paradigm. Okay, central banks recognizing the revaluation potential of gold view their gold revaluation accounts as a means to shore up their balance sheet. In other words, those overnight revaluations hyperinflate all that debt away and they can start at zero. Isn't that convenient? That's why it is so important that we vote with our wallets and we vote with our purses and we vote for sound money, gold and silver in your possession. Until you can convert it into the underlying, it ain't done.